Good morning, traders. Can you hear me and see my screen if you can? Uh, say yes in the <laughs> Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Blemis and Alan. All right. Okay, guys. Well, uh, welcome to the uh, Advanced Education Live Trading Webinar Ooh. here. Uh, on Fridays, we do the live analysis, Monday, Tuesday, and Fridays, 10 a.m., uh, with the goal of uh, applying what you've learned from the educational course. So if you haven't um, attended or you know watched the uh, recordings of the educational course, it's online. Uh, log into the bookmap.com portal slash portal and uh, you'll see it in there uh, under education. And uh, we're going to go through the same course content here but in the live market so that you can apply what you've learned. Uh, the whole goal here is to, um, you know, so you, you can see it in the live market. You can see when these things unfold. Uh, and then we have live trading uh, two days a week from uh, JTrader and Scott Pulsini, a stocks trader and a futures trader. A great one yesterday with uh, Scott Pulsini. Uh, the recording is up on uh, YouTube, so uh, I can show you that, uh, where that is. I can put the link into the chat here as well. Uh, let me uh, bring it up here. Hold on. Okay. How can you see what's happening yeah, I mean, where you guys can find this here? Hold on. Okay. Okay. So uh, go to uh, bookmap.com slash YouTube and it'll redirect you here. Uh, and then scroll down and it's underneath. I put it both in selected webinars here as well as live streaming recordings. Uh, it's the same one you can see here, but uh, you know, we're gonna continue to add to the uh, streaming one so that over time that will this will go kind of in the background, but this one will stay here for longer um, until another one is added in. All right, so that's where you can find it if you guys wanna follow up and, and watch that. Um, some really good stuff. I, I was pretty amazed. Like. Uh, uh, Scott was just on fire uh, yesterday uh, going through uh, and getting some real insight to like, you know, how how uh, uh, someone of his caliber trades like uh, really, really insightful to see like he's going to just once he starts to leverage up, look out I and mean, this guy's going to be an animal, just a, a monster. Uh, I just, yeah, it's almost almost a little kind of nervous uh, to, to think about uh, how much size he's going to start trading here pretty soon. So uh, good morning, David. Uh, good morning, Fabio. Um, all right. So uh, anyway, that's the live trading that comes with the education. Uh, and we think it's, you know, pretty robust and, and complete education that you're getting. Uh, and uh, now we also have Tom B streaming uh, in uh, uh, his channel. Uh, the the traders lab here so uh, I know you guys are well aware of that uh, keep an eye out for that Tom will uh, likely uh, you know he can stream when he likes uh, so he'll likely come in uh, you know uh, sometime after this webinar is finished uh, and uh, he's been streaming for like I don't know three or four hours in there uh, great stuff so um, uh, you know apply uh, well let me go through the goal again here with these educational webinars uh, the goal is to pri provide this foundation uh, and then uh, other traders uh, like Scott, like uh, uh, JTrader, like Tom, uh, they're going to trade the way or look at the markets the way that they uh, like to look at the markets. Uh, it is their way of, of trading um, or analysis uh, and get insight from that, okay, different perspectives. Uh, so uh, we're building this community in here. We want the education to be the foundation for you guys uh, to build upon. All right. So anyway, enough on all of that. Let's go through some disclosures and let's look at the S&P uh, and uh, bigger picture as well. General disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. A risk disclosure, trading futures, equities and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so let's jump in here looking at the S&P. Uh, all sorts of volatility in here, guys. Like, uh, look at this move up, uh, 8.30 a.m. Of course, we had some news then, but then uh, 
uh, continued on up 9.30 a.m., look at it crater right back down uh, to uh, uh, where it uh, kind of initiated this move to the upside. Uh, before we get into some of the order flow uh, in book map here, uh, I want to look at the bigger picture. All right, so uh, we're going to look at some candlestick charts here. We have a daily on the left. Uh, and then we have a... Um, we have the uh, um, hourly and then the uh, five minute, I think it is right now, which is fine. We can look at it. I usually have a 15 minute, but uh, that, that's fine. Uh, all right. Well, let's take a look at this daily here. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to add in some more bars in here. So uh, uh, anyway, we see the, uh, the move down uh, below all of this daily activity here decisive move down below it uh, and then uh, you know this is this idea here a concept that you know this decisive move lower uh, is exactly what we look at in the order flow as well so this is all fractal so you'll note how uh, you know you'll see this kind of move and and you know like big volume uh, as well as price movement together right moving it away from a previous area here Right? And now it's accepting lower. Now we'll get pullbacks, and we get pullbacks to these areas where it broke from uh, all the time. Okay, So far, we really haven't gotten much of that. I think we did on maybe last Monday or something, and we were looking for that pullback uh, back up into this area, and, and we got it. Uh, and then we see the continuation here to the downside. Uh, so uh, I think this was Monday, right? The uh, This big wick here. So for that one, we need to look at the more bars in here all right so this this gives us a little more insight so it was this area here and we were watching it um, looking for you know this this is where we had uh, a lot of wicks and a massive move to the upside here uh, back in October uh, of uh, 2021 and um, uh, yeah, see the wicks here, see the spike down below it, and then the move right back up. And we can see other moves uh, back down to the low side here. But we're still kind of in this range here, basically, right? This wick here is the rejection and then the move back up. So uh, as you guys can see, you know, we're, we're just the last several days, we've been like bashing back and forth in a pretty big range here uh, from uh, the low here around this uh, 42.63 on up. Uh, to mostly around 44, 25 or so, something like that. Uh, so uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's the uh, the daily chart, and I don't see any reason why like it wouldn't continue to just kind of chop back and forth here for right now. Uh, we'll see when we get to some of these outer edges here. Uh, but uh, let's look at the hourly chart here uh, and uh, what's going on in in this chart. Uh, yeah, here's the move back down to this kind of uh, 46 or 42, um, uh, 66, 64 area, uh, something like that. Uh, move back up. So this one's uh, showing a bit more bearish activity in here uh, because we got a lower high here and we have an equal low here. Uh, plus, we see the move down, move back up, and it breaks. And then look at the even the retest here uh, just uh, an hour ago or so, right? Uh, the retest back up to here and it failed so uh, we we don't we're not seeing buyers uh, kind of up into this area here uh, and we see the move back down okay so uh, now the, the buyers are still they're still you can see the, the current price action here on the hourly we're around this 4312 or so uh, 13 area uh, they're, they're trying to move it back up let's go back down into the the five minute chart now you know, we're just looking at zones. Uh, we're looking at price action, uh, and we're looking at you know previous areas of uh, of the auction, uh, and we're we're looking at the, uh, where it accepted and rejected, and we're starting to understand some of these moves here on these higher time frames. Now we're going to take some of these levels and then put them in the book map, and then we're going to look about for the order flow around some of these important levels. That's the uh, well, the exercise here. Uh, so uh, yeah, you can see even the, the moves down and some of these wicks down here, uh, right where it kind of blasted out from uh, at 8:30 uh, this morning. Okay, and uh, yeah, some of these moves back up, uh, and um, 
Yeah, so far, now you see some sellers starting to come in. So is this a pullback here uh, in the bigger picture? And then are we looking for sellers to start to come in uh, and then try to trade it right back down to uh, uh, this kind of 4284 or 3 area here? Let's take a, let's take a look in book map. Okay, so uh, yeah, here's our pullback. Uh, and uh, yeah, hold on a minute here. All right. <clears throat> and let's start to mark up some of our uh, uh, market uh, uh, structure here. Okay, so we get a feel for some of these levels, a little more in-depth uh, feel for these levels here. So we had, you know, uh, uh, an area here and we had this kind of a uh, uh, breakout of it here. Uh, and then they failed. Okay, you can even see one here. This is where we've retested so far. Okay, this this swing here. So it's actually kind of three little little uh, areas in there. Um, so uh, uh, any, anyway, kind of kind of mump, you know, uh, uh, you know, mashed up in here. Uh, anyway, the, uh, the the structure here. We have another structure uh, that we're looking at here. We see the break above it. Now the question is, are we going to accept above it or are we going to come back into it? Uh, so let's take a look. All right. Well, so far, uh, what was the move out of here like? Well, not not bad. Uh, you know, volume picked up. Um, you can see, though, like kind of overall, there's more selling down at, at some of these levels here than there is buying up above it here so far. So, uh, yeah, keeping an eye out uh, of what, what this... Uh, uh, what this new structure uh, is here. Is it gonna fail back into the range here or is it gonna accept outside? Uh, we have high liquidity up here around 43.15 and then also at 4,300 here. Okay, so uh, yeah, here come the buyers. All right, so uh, now this is where the sellers dropped it from. Okay, and uh, yeah, here come the buyers back up into this liquidity here. Okay, not bad, not bad. Buying is not bad here, it's just not that convincing uh, either. Uh, to be honest okay so uh, in fact let's see if we can get a pullback right back down to this 4310 here okay just where it broke from and then let's see if we will go through the scenario here what if we get more sellers down here okay if we get the more sellers down here looks like they'll likely kind of come back down and trade into this 4300 here Okay, so that scenario is not playing out right now. You see that the bid is actually supporting uh, the buyers here uh, in, in the order book. Okay, so uh, let's see if, and, and we're finding, you know, buyers here. So anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know what I think of it yet. I'm not, not too convinced. It's looking more convincing on the buy side here, definitely. Uh, now, now that I see them coming in here. So let's see if they can break this 43, um, 13 or 15 on up into 20. Okay, that looks like the most likely scenario here. Look at the buying coming in. So we're looking for the break here up into 4320. Okay, so we're, we didn't really quite know what to think of this yet. We're looking for the pullback. We did get the pullback to 4310. And then we weren't quite too sure. And once they started to come back in here, we're looking for it. Uh, we started to see some of that, uh, that buying in here. Okay, so um, uh, anyway, uh, pull back immediately already back to where these buyers came in here at 12, and we're still finding more buying here. Okay, they did make a higher high, so we're still trending upwards, okay, and still looking for liquidity up here around this 43.20 to, to fill. All right, how does that how does that fit in with the bigger picture here? Yeah, not bad. Uh, there's a there's an area here that we kind of marked up, and you can see we can draw a line across it here. So still looking for 
Oh, okay, David, so you're, you're answering a question there. Yeah. All right, let's see it, buyers. Let's see you trade up into it here. Okay, and that's it for now. We're just looking for that move. Okay, nothing more. In fact, we can look for some some sort of activity to happen up here. Uh, maybe we see a lot of stops being triggered. Uh, maybe uh, we see a, a sweep of the order book up above here. Uh, and then, then we'll, after that event, so there we are at our 4320, okay, after this event, uh, let's see what happens. Because this is the event we're looking for to unfold, and it already did. What happens after this event is what we want to know now. So we might get sellers back down below 4320, and then we'd be looking for kind of a return back down into the range here. Okay, back down below, well, 43.17 uh, or so is where they kind of broke out from here. So uh, let's see if we get maybe a pullback to some of these areas here. Now, we, we also, like, um, uh, I, I want to cover more, um, a bit a bit more about the um, uh, low volume pullbacks that we covered the other day. Uh, I think this can be really helpful for you guys uh, to start to understand some of these uh, uh, pullback areas here. Okay, and uh, yeah, so where would the pullback, first pullback be? It would be right around here. It's already pulled back to this one. Okay, I'm looking for the next one down here around 23. Okay, seller should be able to come in and, and hit it down to about 23. Uh, the next one after that would likely be down here around 20, where we kind of, we're looking for that target here uh, to be reached. Okay, so we're already down at 20, below 23. Let's see if they can hit it down into 20. And, and, and at that point, we're going to reassess again here. And look at that liquidity come in. And the reaction to that liquidity was, was buyers. So, and, and even more. So there's still look at that skew of the book there. This is this is an algo definitely pushing. They're trying to get it higher here, and they pull. So th this algo here had no intent to trade. And it's working though. Look at it. Look at it. It's still it's still going higher. Okay, now we see something a little different. See how the so the sellers took the algo on or this the skew in the order book here. What happens after this event? Okay, do we see sellers below it or buyers above it? Because we found some sellers and there's still buyers above it. Okay, these little areas can become like a, a pivot areas. So let's mark it up and I'm gonna mark it up here with a, a just a, a starting the line right here. We'll see how that unfolds. All right, looking for sellers below it here. We get our sellers below it. There they are. Uh, not quite, not quite. Let's see it. more sellers below it here. And then a move back down to maybe 21 or our 20 level that we were looking at earlier. All right, sellers, let's see you hit it. There's 23, looking for 20, 21 or 20. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, all right. So now we're back down into this level here, uh, and now we're going to reassess again. Okay. So you also have a low volume node here. This is our 17 level. This is where it broke out from. Okay, and we're already there. All right. I I imagine we're going to get some some traders here that are, are going to take uh, some profits. They're not getting stopped I imagine getting stopped out do I even have stops on here hold on a minute sorry about that
All right. All right. So this uh, low volume node is just getting run over here uh, and sellers continue to come in. They're going to go for 4310. Uh, looks like the next one here. Uh, I imagine down here we should get some uh, some covering uh, and then a, and then a pullback uh, to the upside back to about 17 or so. OK, so here we go. Looking for 10. Okay, this is definitely a low volume pullback. Okay, and then now looking for sellers to come right back in and try to hit it down into 10 here. Okay, a little back and forth, and let's see if uh, let's see if we can get seller our sellers in here on this rotation, and no. Okay, sellers, there you go. Now they should be able to hit it. And hit 10. We've got 11 and a quarter, that was it. Another pullback. So we're starting to find some buying interest down here. Okay, in this in this level here. Interesting. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit. Makes sense. I mean, this is there's a little more volume that transacted in this little area here. All right, let's get another rotation though. I still think we can go lower here. Uh, let's see, 10. I mean, it would be nice to see a pullback all the way to the kind of 4302 or 4300 down here. I don't see much liquidity there, but uh, uh, anyway, looking for, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe uh, uh, yeah, somewhere around this, maybe 05 to begin with. I also like 07. This is where that move kind of initiated here. Okay, this is starting to kind of turn into a consolidation period here. So it seems to be kind of value area at the moment. Even with this buying above it, look out if we can get our sellers here, looking for the move back down to 10. Yeah, I like it. These guys are on the on the hook here. If we can get that some selling down here, they should be able to hit down into 10 and maybe lower, maybe back down into our 05 area here that we're looking at. Okay, well, we got a skew in the order book. They pulled, though. They pulled. They had no intent to trade. See sellers below it. Let's see it, sellers. Let's see if you got it or not. Are you interested in selling? Yep, there we go. All right, so now that's not much selling though. So I'm, I'm kind of careful here watching this. It's not so decisive. We can get a move right back up into where we just dropped from up here at maybe 16. Okay, this seems to be kind of a, a you, you can see how this is establishing itself. You know, a little bit of a value area uh, is building out the, the, the profile. It's uh, now we're getting our move though. It, we did get a pullback to about 15, not 16. Okay, now we're through 10. And on down, 05. Yeah, I, I didn't like it, even though like you see you see the move here, and it's, it's just it's just down to the kind of the bottom of the uh, swing here. This didn't look decisive. This looks more decisive here. This this volume, uh, but it's down below the level here. I wanted to see it grow here and move outside of the level. I don't like seeing it down here. Okay, that is another low volume pullback, definitely. All right, sellers should hit it again. They should be able to hit it. Should be able to hit 05 and maybe the, the figure here. Okay, there's 
05. They should be able to take it lower than 05. Okay. So anyway, like, boy, sorry, guys. I mean, I've, I've been like, you know, trying to uh, uh, analyze here in real time and, and just uh, why is it going to some of these levels? Or why do we think that this scenario is more likely uh, for it to go to some of these levels? We'd have to kind of take a little bit of a break and go back and, and, and not do live narration in here. Um, but uh, uh, we have our, there are reasons uh, why we're looking for it, you know. Uh, and that's the important part here uh, to understand. Like, um, uh, what, what is it that is um, why we think more sellers might come in and push it down? Uh, into some of our levels here. Okay, and still looking for 4,300, the figure. One caveat is just this one right here. Uh, we do, a, we even drew our line here. This is the swing, and this is another swing here, this little swing low. So look for just a move down below that one, uh, and then we can get buyers that might might come in. But uh, um, other than that, I'd be looking for, yeah, 4,300, the figure to test. Just be careful around this kind of O2 and a half or O3 area here. Okay, due to what, what we just talked about. Uh, all right, so the um, let's watch this here. All right, looking for a failure, looking for sellers right around O7 or and a half. See if we can get sellers here at 07 and a half, and then we should get the move. All right, sellers, let's see what you got, and let's see if we can move it. Okay, we're down below that, so starting to sell. Careful here. Like, uh, not, not trusting it right now. Uh, we, we've moved down already pretty nicely, so we're going to get some back and forth in here. It just wasn't decisive here. We got some sellers here, just not enough. All right, so we got to move right back up. All right, and let's see if this can fail. And there we go. All right, sellers down. And they, let's see if they, they should be able to get it down to this kind of 06 and then, and then break it. I think they got enough selling pressure in here. But guys, take a look. Uh, you know, this is where the selling came in. And we're looking for those low volume pullbacks and then continuation. Okay, these low volume pullbacks are starting to turn into more, more buy volume. So this is how we start to see a potential reversal starting to shape up or take place. Okay, we're still bearish here. Okay, overall, we're still bearish. We, we know that uh, sellers are in control uh, on this smaller time frame. Uh, and uh, uh, we're looking for them to, to take it down below this kind of 07.5 or 06 area down here for the continuation into 4300. Okay. And we're looking for a rotation here uh, to do that. And here, here comes some selling here. I, I'd actually like to see one more spike back up above and then to reject and then see the selling come in and then push it down to 4300. I don't know if we're going to get that scenario or not. Looks like they're just going to go for it right here. We already had the move up uh, a few times here, right? Uh, but notice the difference here. Like, you know, low volume pullbacks in these areas in here. Starting to see some buyers. Starting to see a little more buying in some of these areas, in the bars, and also in the uh, in the dots. So this this zone in here starts to look, look a little different as a low volume pullback. Okay? It's kind of almost equal pullback. So we're, we, we can start to kind of look for uh, the potential for a reversal to start to shape up. I still think we're going lower. Uh, and then, but uh, we, 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 could get, we could get some returns back into kind of this 10 or 11 area here. Okay, so this is the move we're looking for. Back down into 4,300. Okay, 
we're, we're already through the 03 or 05, so that kind of below the swing here uh, is it's already, we don't have to worry about that anymore. That's already through it. And now let's see down here. Okay, traded into 4300. Okay, our, our high volume note is still way down here. So for the whole session uh, that I have here, this is the most traded level. All right, so let's mark that one up too, or I can, I think I can put in there just the point of control. Yeah. All right. So that's that yellow line here. Okay, return to value here. Uh, what do you have there, David? You're looking at a uh, head and shoulders pattern. Yeah, 16 on down. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, oh no, on my chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. The, your your head and shoulders pattern. You know, look. I, you know, I want to go through what the head and shoulder. I mean, you know, done it many many times. So you know, if you want me to skip it, I'll skip it. Uh, but you know, what we're looking at in the head and shoulders pattern is it's not so much about the pattern. It's how the pattern is made and what the pattern means. Uh, we have a name for it called a head and shoulders, but I don't give a hoot about that. Um, what it what it means is we were uptrending and uptrending, uh, and then it failed to uptrend and it went down below back into this previous range and went back and forth. That's your shoulder. You didn't get we didn't get uh, uh, traders to take it back up uh, to retest this area here. So uh, in essence, this also could be trap volume up here, but uh, you know in this case I'm not I'm not sure. Uh, we'd look for stops. Maybe the first stop run here is some 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 of these traders uh, that got it wrong. Uh, that makes really uh, good sense, uh, common sense right there. Uh, but the rest of the move, though, I think is new selling coming in, uh, bringing it back down into these lower levels here. All right. So uh, anyway, we see the flow change here. Okay, from upside to sellers coming in. More sellers coming in. We're looking for low volume pullbacks and selling can to continue. We notice though, like, hmm, some buying starting to come in here, right? In this little area, in this zone here. Uh, we're still look still uh, bearish, but we're starting to note that these aren't as decisive moves as it was in these areas here. Okay, due to the volume within the structure. Okay. Now we have, uh, you know, that that's pretty pretty straightforward, pretty clear. We also look at the order book. Like here, we just filled tons of liquidity here at forty three hundred. That was the target, uh, and now we're back up into these previous levels that we were talking about earlier. Okay, back up into our twelve level. Okay, now we also have the potential for buyers to break out of this area and move it back up to maybe seventeen or maybe twenty. Okay. Now, what, what's the order book look like? Well, they just came in here at 20. All right. Let's see if buyers want to go for that liquidity at 20. Looks like it. Okay, we're almost at 17 already. Okay. There's some front running right in front of it there. You guys can see coming into the order book. Okay. And they are supporting it on the bid, but not so much. Not yet. 4310. They're not so. They're very hesitant down here. Okay. Now they're adding in a little bit. See how hesitant they are? All right, so now we got it. All right, they should go for 20. Let's see it, buyers. You should be able to hit it. Okay, now, our 20 level. Note the structure. 
in the break of it. I think we had something else over here too. Yeah, in the in the break over here as well. This is this is how we drew up our, our 20 line right here due to the structure over here. It also matches with the move above it and below it here. So this is a good area to retest. Okay, now it also happens to be a low volume node. Even these low volume nodes, high volume nodes, why do they exist? And you know, I, again, I, I just I don't give a hoot about it being a high volume node or low volume node and that you're supposed to short it or because it rejected here or whatever, or it's a high volume node that is valued that it should come back into it. Why? Look, look at your patterns and your charts over here. Uh, and uh, this is what defines this area here. Just means that price shot down here after 930 and went back and forth here for a long time. Uh, and the, where it traded the most happens to be at this area down here, okay, right around this uh, 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 4292. Okay, uh, this is you know I I, I it's a um, something I, I think is really important uh, for uh, at least it helped me tremendously uh, is to start to understand uh, what these things represent. Once you understand what they represent, and then you can start to look at it and you can kind of p uh, pull it apart a bit and look at it in different ways uh, with the order flow and the different scenarios that start to unfold in the order flow. Okay, It's just like the, the point here with CVD. It, the, the point is very simple with CVD. Let's take stops and icebergs off for a moment. You know, uh, traders with CVD, they're like, oh, well, that's divergence. I should I should go the opposite direction. No, not at all. D you don't, you're not taking signals off of CVD. You're understanding what's going on in the order flow. And does this match with the order flow to give you a much clearer idea of what's going on with the CVD? Does it, does the CVD support the order flow? That's where you're going to get the, the, uh, the uh, the bang for your buck here. It is the same concept with understanding profiles. Okay, does the order flow match up with your profiles? Because if it doesn't, your low volume node, they're gonna they're gonna uh, traders are gonna trade right through it, uh, no problem. And other uh, traders that don't understand some of these concepts, they're gonna be lining up here buying, and they're just gonna get completely run over, uh, and that will be the fuel to the move right back down to point of control or into this previous value area, All right? So just um, uh, start to understand the order flow around uh, these levels that make up the pattern. Uh, and then this kind of gives a, gives a whole new kind of perspective on some of your patterns. All right, we got some selling down here, but in this little move here, buyers took control, right? They took control from here on up. And now they're, we're going to see if we get sellers below it here. Are they going to push through it? We can look at, even look at this uh, low volume node here. Are they going to push through it? Looking for it, looking for them. There they go. Okay, so now let's see them continue to push on through back down to uh, this 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 previous value area which we know is uh, this this area here and the and the point of control down here 92 
All right, let's take a look here. All right, so sellers are in control on this move, guys. So from this point on, or even look at look at some of the is, this point here is is kind of up for up for grabs. In in fact, this this area is a little bit different now. Sellers did take control here. Right, we see the move. I'm looking actually for a pullback to it right now. Let's see. I want to see them pull right back to this kind of O2 area here. Now I know that's only a few points, um, but I'll, I'll explain why in just a minute here. Okay, and then maybe we can even get up to O5 here. This is the battleground, right? Right in here. Yeah, and there's no decisive winner at this point right now. Okay, I mean, in the in the bigger picture, or in this move, we're looking for the move back down into you know 92. But um, I'm I'm looking for, and I'll I'll explain why in a minute. I'm looking for this pullback here. Okay, back up to kind of 02, and then maybe 05. Now the order flow rules too. I have to be flexible here. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, however, if I get sellers down here, it doesn't matter. Like you know, if they're going to start to to move it, then this whole little idea for this pullback is is mute. Okay, see see how they're pulling at 92 or 02. So we got our move to 02. Still look, I still think they got a little juice in here. They can get up to 05. And hit this liquidity here at 05. Okay, careful. So, again, this is the bottle ground right here. If we get our sellers here, they're going to take it. And they're going to take it pretty swiftly down to 02 or 90. I would say 90. Uh, below point of control, maybe, maybe back down to 85. Okay, so our battleground here, buyers are winning and looking for the move to 05. At 05, we'll reassess here and maybe we can get to 10 as well. Okay, there's our 05 transacting right now. Maybe they can still push it a little bit higher. Maybe get to 10. Okay, so we're going to talk about the order flow around this level. Okay, and and, and what we're what we're looking at in here. So I needed to kind of cover that that in real time. This was the battleground, and it's it's right down here. Um, but, uh, uh, and, and we can see, you know, the, we, we got the move we're, we're looking for, but, but, uh, why let's, let's cover that. Uh, so there's, there's 10 as well. And that's a lot of buying, uh, that's 10. That's going to be a nice stop run. Yeah. Beauty. Well, it's not that many. I shouldn't say. What is it? Uh, Negative four, ah, uh, three hundred or so, somewhere around there. Not, not bad, not bad. Okay, we're even higher, fifteen. Go back to twenty here. Let's zoom out. Well, let me let me cover it. Why why do you guys what do you guys think? Like what 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 happened down here that made us think that we we would get this move back up into 05 and then maybe 10. What do you what do you guys think? Okay, so we're talking about this zone here. Anyone
Love to hear it. Love to hear it. And th this is how you'll learn accumulation. Mm, kind of, uh, David. Not, 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 not really. But um, it's more. It's more about like who's in control and where and where like it kind of took control. See, Spot is writing and Alan is writing. You have a regression channel there. Okay, so you're looking at something in a bigger picture spot. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm so so uh, this is this is actually a really nice point because oh boy, look at this strong strong move on that buy side. Okay, so we're finding quite a few buyers uh, going right for it here. Going for 25. Uh, now they have this is strong buying. I think we're going to go up to 30 here. Look at the distinction in the in the buying here. Okay, but the first stop is the swing, and we're almost there. Okay, but I still think we can go to 30. These are easier moves to look for. I mean, once these start to unfold, it, it's the, the 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 train just you know keeps going uh, a lot of the time. Uh, so uh, we're looking for the continuation. Now, what can be really helpful for looking for this continuation um, to unfold is look at some of the uh, other correlated markets here, right? Let's look at the NASDAQ. How is it doing? Okay, what is it doing? Let me get rid of the stops or sweeps here. Okay, yeah, NASDAQ heading to the upside as well. Uh, what about Russell? How's the Russell doing? Okay. Russell's kind of behind, right? They, they got to get through this area here, and they, they are. They're starting to. So, yeah, you know, we don't have quite the Russell going with us. So I it, I think we'll get up there to 30. Well, we're almost there. Um, it's just uh, it, it's not going to be quite as clean as if if the Russell was, then like this would be easy move. We'd probably get to 40, I think. Uh, 34, 40. Um, let's see here. Okay, spot. So you got you've got. Um, oh, okay. So uh, Fabio, the question was uh, down in this zone here. Like it just seems like such an easy. Uh, here, let me just use the uh, drag tool. If you guys don't use this tool, it's really helpful. Um, I find if you want to get more precise, uh, click on this, and then you kind of left click, hold, and drag within the specific area uh, you want, and then it'll put that within the chart range here. All right. So, whoops, don't want that. If you if you don't exit the tool, it does exactly what I just did. Uh, you'll zoom in again, and but there's a quick way out is hit Control Z, and uh, you'll go back to your uh, previous view. Now here I need to get out of this uh, because I'm if it's selected here um, or still active, it has a blue um, square around it. So you can hit Escape. No, you can't. You have to click on it. Uh, and then we can uh, kind of scroll a little bit up in here and see it. Okay, so the question was in this zone down here, uh, what is it that like kind of made us think that uh, we would, uh, um, you know, potentially get a move back up? Uh, just looking for a retest back up into some of these previous areas. Okay, it turned into a reversal. Uh, because otherwise, like this was such an easy, easy call that like it should trade down to here. No problem. Like, you know, the point of control and this is where it should go. Right. Ninety two is what we were saying. Ninety four as well. Somewhere around there. Uh, and it didn't. OK, and we want to know why. And the order flow will, will help us understand that. So that was a question, uh, and uh, all right, we'll come back to it in just a minute here. Let me just zoom out and see what's going on here. Uh, now you can see I, I I zoom out, and right now I, I kind of fiddled, fiddled around with things. So I actually changed the recentering. I want to show you guys how to recenter. Uh, so right click on the price ladder here, and you can see it's on recenter none. So uh, it, it just means that uh, you know I, if I go back to the current market, it's going to go back to wherever you know. Uh, it'll go back to the right, but it, it's going to go back to the area I'm in. So I got to recenter it. 
so I right click on the price ladder and then I'm going to go back to auto trades here okay and there's our 30 level getting filled okay let's take a look at our Russell how's our Russell doing it's still going it's still going um, how's the Nasdaq doing Okay, this is probably breaking out a lot stronger not nah, not so decisive it's it is it's breaking out or just about to it looks it looks pretty good I think we'll get the breakout here maybe up to 14 150 or, or 200 here uh, in Nasdaq that's like a 50 point move or more than that 70 point move um, God it's just the volatility is amazing um, and that's why we're going over the S&P so much here, uh, because uh, we can. Uh, it's moving, moving nicely here. So continuation, still still looking for it. A little little nervous on it, but uh, still looking for it. I mean, we have no reason to think differently. We still see the volume. They're still moving it. So we're looking for our 40 level next. Uh, they're supporting it underneath here on at 30. Uh, look at them try to boost it higher. Uh, with uh, liquidity here high in the bid uh, and uh, sellers are kind of showing a little bit of interest now though and they, they pulled and added lowered back down to 30. All right. Okay, so uh, yeah, David, okay, so you, okay, I, maybe I didn't po pose the question quite right. There, we found some sellers, guys, but um, uh, so uh, it's the reaction after this event now that we want to watch buyers or sellers above it and we get our buyers above it we're coming right back up we're not we're not getting them so far we're getting our sellers so looking for this lower liquidity here okay uh, around 27 or so not much not much of a move now we will go over higher time frame moves if if you're new in here and you're and you're looking at um, uh, uh, you know things here in in, in book map um, and I'm covering so many different small moves in here. Yeah, it's because like, you know, um, we'll I'll only be covering it for maybe another, you know, 15 minutes or so. Um, and uh, we need to go through as many examples as we can. Uh, if we're looking for our higher time frame move, we'd be just kind of sitting back waiting and watching. Right. Uh, and um, uh, it would be it would be a very different kind of approach. And. Uh, there wouldn't be too much to go over. So we'll go over as many examples as we can, right? So anyway, let's get back to answer the question here. Uh, let's see, and Fabio says, and buyers don't seem to be higher volume. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, let's let's zoom in here. We'll get we'll get in here a little bit closer and, and we'll look at the area here. Uh, and and what gave us some, some insight in the order flow in here? Okay, so let me, uh, I'm going to clear all the drawings, guys, just to make it easy here. Um, all right, so in this move lower, okay, this is where the sellers came in and started to move it. We can see the big red dot. Uh, you can even see it up here. You know, they moved it here, and it wasn't so decisive. The decisive move was here. Uh, although this did, you know, accept lower the entire time. Um, and in fact, this was a low volume pullback in here. And we'll cover that maybe, well, we'll cover that many more times in the, in the, in the future, in near future. But let's answer the question. Uh, here's the move lower. Okay, we have liquidity getting filled here. Uh, but really, the biggest volume that took place is down here. Okay, or even in here, right? We can see it in the dots and, and the bars. Okay. I have my bar set up. Let me show you. My bar setup is just like my dots. Okay. I have it as volume delta and I also have the smart clustering. I inherit it from my dots. Just click on this button here. Okay. Uh, and that'll be the clustering uh, uh, similar to my dots. All right. So now we know where the big volume took place. This is where the sellers, you know, try to take control. It's down here. And now the, 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 the move took, the range took, you know, from here on down. Okay, but the most of the selling took place in here. So this is really kind of a, a do or die area in here. Right? So 
if we get sellers down below it, then we're really looking for that move into 92 and, and below, probably 90 or even back down into 85, something like that. You know, these levels of liquidity, not just not I don't see liquidity here at 92. Um, so uh, that might be very, very likely just to hit 90 and then 85. Right. But what happened was. If these sellers in here can get upended by buyers coming in above that area, and we'd be looking for the move back up to test uh, these other areas um, uh, first, right? And we're looking at 05 because that's where the liquidity is. Okay, so it's this area down here. It's this cluster of selling. Now, the entire move is this, but the majority of it was here. So this is really the kind of do or die area in here. Now, if there was selling heavy selling from here on down, uh, likely, and we see that move all the time, right? Then likely uh, we would uh, maybe get kind of the, a pull back to about, you know, somewhere like in these areas here, likely it wouldn't come back all the way back up. Um, and then we get the continuation of the move. But here, because we saw the selling down in here, in these areas, we're looking for buyers to maybe take it and retest it back up into these areas here. We're looking for, um, they because they can, they, they the selling is down here, it's not up here, right? So, and get these guys on the run, these sellers on the run, all right? And, uh, and that's exactly what they did. Uh, traders were able to like, you know, get it up here. Uh, and then here's our stop run uh, to the upside. So the stop run happened more about, about 10 and, and above, all right? This is oh god I just this is something I just love 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 about Bookmap is you know we I would assume without having the stops and icebergs I would be looking for stops up above here above the swing above ten okay so if we go over here and there is you know uh, but I'm always surprised to see where the, the the big stop runs take place and it's here actually at ten and I wouldn't I wouldn't think that. Um, you know, before the uh, before the swing here. So uh, yeah, I would think it would be above it, and I would I would look for a big spike above it here. Um, but uh, uh, just the move to the liquidity is what I was looking for. Um, first the 05 and then 10. Okay, so that makes sense to you guys. You want me to you want me to cover that again? Um, but understanding the the volume and, and the location within the um, the range. Where does that volume uh, take place? And then we're looking for the play uh, on this area here. This is this is where the the battle is going to take place, and we're watching it closely here. Uh, I thought they'd move it here. They took one more sh one more stab at it here, and then the buyers came in. Um, so uh, uh, anyway, um, okay, you you want to go over it again, David? We can we can we can go over it. I mean, it's just I mean, it's really okay. Yeah, yeah. This is this is going to be like start to look at where these things are trading within these ranges. This is really key to understand. And also, we know like on the way down here, they're getting filled on the bid here too. This is adding quite a bit to it as well. I I haven't really covered that. Um, I, I mentioned it briefly here, but they're getting filled in here here also down here okay on on the bid and we know that um, so but it was this these volume clusters down here all of the volumes taking place down here okay it didn't it you know it, it if we zoom out a little bit you can you can start to see it maybe a little bit clearer okay so yeah we're looking for the volume in in these clusters here. And if we get buyers back up above it, we're looking for the move back up. And that we're just looking for the move back up for right now. Sellers still in control at this point. Okay. Once they start to get back up above 10 and 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 or we see the volume really starting to pick up in these areas here, they're they're taking control. Right? And you, that's where we see the, the market um, structure change and shift. And we're looking for the same idea of same concept down here. You know, we see all that selling in here. Just think about it. Like if we can get buyers back up above it, we should get the move back up. And we should, and I would imagine we see a stop run on the way back up too. And we do, we do see some stop runs in here. 
then these guys got duped and then they got stopped out here okay and this this we know for fact too okay if we look at this uh, did did i cover that enough david for you i i'm not sure uh or any of you guys like uh i uh, don't want to pick on you but like uh uh, just understanding this has been kind of the battleground in here because this, these are where the transactions took place. Okay, cool. All right. And because of that, then we're looking to see if we can get on the other side of it. And and uh, uh, who's who's going to take control around this battleground down here? Okay, our, our structure is this. Okay, but we want to know what's going on in the in within the structure, right? Starting to really dive into it here. Uh, and this was a nuance in here, but you, boy, you know, look for these things again and again. Ask these questions. Who's in control and then where uh, are they in control? And if they're in control down here, they're kind of on the edge here. Uh, they can they can easily be have it put to them. All right. So this kind of turns into the battleground and, and that's what hap that's what unfolded here. Otherwise, we would have been looking for the simple straight move on down into 92, 90 and 85. Uh, but uh, we thought a little differently in here because of what we saw in here. And then we're looking for the order flow to um, support that. Once we kind of bounce off these areas, we start to see the buying coming in. We're looking for the move. Okay, I, Like I said, I thought it would happen maybe in here, maybe even here, maybe even in here. And it took one more stab at it. And then we finally got the move. All right. So now even under... Um, transitioning off of this little battleground into look who's winning the battle like this is this is great stuff because like this is where i think it's really easy trading once we see that we know the buyers are in control like this the move up to 20 was kind of a no-brainer all right and then maybe even 30 uh we mentioned now that would be it though right uh do we get to 40 we even got to 40 my god Nice, nice move. Now, we started to also look at, and, and now if we zoom out, can you guys see what I'm talking about? Can you can you see where the, uh, uh, the, the, the buyers really came in and, and took control? Oh, thanks, Fabio. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you 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 will do the same thing. Um, you will be reading these areas. You will be looking for these scenarios to uh, to possibly unfold. Um, and that's that's kind of a key, I think, uh, Fabio. Is like look at where these scenarios might unfold or how they might unfold. Uh, and we look for one thing or the other to trade or to happen. Uh, and um, you know, it, and uh, we're just waiting and watching for those things to start to unfold, right? Now, looking looking here, I mean, it's re uh, to me, like, I don't, I don't know what you guys feel, but it looks really clear to me, buyers coming in here, and then look at buyers even above 20, my God, look at them coming in, right? Now, we were a little careful uh, up in these areas here. We, we, that's when we started to look at correlated markets, uh, and we're looking for a continuation because a lot of times we get these moves up into these areas and they kind of peter out. And it's like, what happened? You know, like uh, why what, there's such strong volume and, and, and it's coming up into these areas. Look at some of your other markets. You know, what, how's the NASDAQ? How's the NASDAQ behaving up in this area here? How's the Russell behaving up in the Even the Russell still, Russell still didn't do it. In fact, it's, it, it, it's right back down. So we don't really have the Russell on our side, but we definitely have the NASDAQ on our side. Okay, based on that, you know, if we start to see the Russell go down and we start to see maybe the, the NQ go down, okay, we'd be looking for the S&P to follow, right? So uh, anyway, uh, yeah, the, um, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty clear move, um, uh, you know, and, and buyers in control, uh, taking it to a higher high here for, for the cash session. Here's our 9.30 open, here's that drive lower, and then all this back and forth, move back up, back and forth again, and then move back up. Uh, how do I reset the zoom? Okay, um, I think, um, uh, and, and I'll get to your your uh, uh, question, David. Or no, I'm sorry, you're, you're um, answering somebody. 
Um, okay. Oh, you're talking about the educational course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay. The um, uh, resetting the zoom. As I'm zooming in and out really, really quickly with my uh, center mouse wheel. Uh, and then if you want to, I'm using 7.3 uh, version of Bookmap, which means that if I just left click in here and then start to drag the chart, I, I can go back and forth in time. Okay, I'm actually kind of at extents right there. Uh, so um, uh, anyway, so yeah, left click, hold and drag it around. Now, if I want to get back to uh, current market, I got to click on this button here in the lower right exit the drag mode and then I'll go back to current market okay oh, okay yeah thanks Alan all right so anyway so now we're really getting into kind of some of the nuances of order flow within some of these areas here uh, and uh, we, we saw a nice little move here now, we didn't know it was going to turn into this. We're just looking for certain areas to start to trade. Now, in hindsight, you, you can see all sorts of stuff. Uh, and, and it's like, oh, yeah, well, why didn't we see that earlier? And here, here it is. You know, we have market structure. We have... Um, yeah, this is kind of a no man's land here at 8:30. Um, but then market structure, market structure, the break of it, and then structure again down here, uh, and then uh, and then the break of it, and retest back down into here, which we were looking for. Okay, and then we thought, well, if they can continue to go, then they're going to go back down to point of control, and we didn't get there. We saw something else in there, and then we saw something unfold. Now, then we also have, again, here, market structure, and then breakout again. Okay, above above 25-ish, uh, and they're going to go for 50 now. Look at look at the volume coming in here, right? We're looking for 50. Okay, we're at 44, and we're looking for 50. Okay, so uh, that's where the liquidity is. All right, and look at the volume coming in. So it looks pretty good. We should hit 50. All right, let's look at the NASDAQ. Also, it looks good. How's the Russell doing? Looks great. Russell's uh, starting to uh, uh, play along. All right, so higher probability move then. Uh, we should get up to 50. All right, and let's take a look back here. We kind of covered some nuances in the order flow, looking at um, uh, the order book where they're getting filled on the bid, and then we're looking for that where that volume traded down here, and then uh, uh, for some pullbacks due to that, and actually turned it to a much bigger move. But we didn't know that. But once we started to see that volume unfold, it's like, whoa, okay, this is going to 20, uh, and then uh, and maybe even 30, uh, and heck, now we're about, almost at 50. Okay. But, uh, you know, this is where I, I think it's really kind of key um, is uh, when reading the order flow, going through these different scenarios and being objective about it, because the more objective you can be about it, the easier it is to make a transition and say, like, well, I thought it was going to do this, but the order flow is doing this. And then go with the flow uh, it is telling you something uh, let's see Alan I'm not sure what you're um, oh you're answering a question yeah uh, I think it's part one and well part two is the, is talking about structure um, and uh, I guess volume within the structure yeah I think it's part two volume and, and, and order book within the structure. Okay, we're still kind of hovering up here, but we haven't traded to 50 yet. Uh, real close to it, but uh, anyway, let's see. How's that NASDAQ doing? It's taking a little breather as well. Our NASDAQ, look at that. It got up to that 14,150 area. 
and that's what we, when we look when we zoomed out we were kind of looking for that one that area here that was like 100 and, or 70 points away right something like that and it's already transacted okay russell uh, russell's pulling back a little bit anyway guys this is another thing i mean this is me um there, there is no reason to to think differently of it not trading up to forty three fifty and still still looking for it. Um, however, um, uh, you know these higher um, numbers or, or higher time frame numbers like this, like uh, the bigger figures like this. Uh, you, you know, I, I like to get out in front of them. A lot of times you'll see it like kind of hover around here. You might get these really deep pullbacks. And you have to be in this trade forever, you know. I, I like to, to try to get out on strength. Um, well, I, at least my have my target hit um, uh, bef before. I like to front run it before, I should say. Because uh, otherwise, I, I just, it, it drives me nuts sometimes. Uh, so I own, own weakness as, as a trader. Uh, you know, there's no reason to not get those extra points. It's just that boy, I'd rather get out, look for maybe a pullback and try to get back in and then look for another opportunity back up, you know, something like that. <laughs> the videos are like Jedi trading. Yeah, here's our move, guys. Looking, looking for it. And let's see it. Buyers take them on. 400 contracts up there. 460 contracts. Boom. There it is. And they're still buying. Um, you know, this is a this is another thing. This isn't so. The order flow is still telling us, like, you know, there's no reason to get out of this. It's still strong buying, and there's still moving the market on strong buying so we look for 4370 4360 you know other areas of high liquidity just a note here on on the higher time frame uh stuff especially on days like friday it can be really unnerving uh a lot of traders will be oh you know cpi data yesterday everything you know everyone's worried about uh uh inflation uh, you know, the, the move to the downside here. Uh, and then, you know, everyone's thinking short. And then this will grind all day higher. The rest of the afternoon is stopping people out and, and uh, uh, hitting their margin. Okay, so let's look at our higher time frame for a minute here and go through that scenario. Okay, well, on the hour chart, I, I like it here. This There's kind of a, you know, uh, a, a many swings up here. I'd be looking for them to kind of spike above this area. There's going to be a ton of stops up in here on this hour chart. And you can even look at the five minute chart here. Uh, and we're up in those areas here right now. Uh, I would be looking though for it to kind of maybe spike above it and then pull back to it. Okay, this is these are strong moves. Look at this hour chart. There's a lot of momentum behind it. So looking for them to spike up above it here. Right, but I'm also looking for some profit taking. I'm also looking for some. Uh, uh, let's take. Let's turn this into a 15-minute chart here. All right. Yeah, may, maybe up to about here. All right, we have a swing there. We have a previous swing here as well. So let's look and see if there's liquidity around that area. 43.65. Something like that. Yeah. Well, 65 is up here. And we see a ton up here, almost a thousand contracts up at 70, All right? So uh, it, it can be um, a very plausible scenario for a continuation on up into these areas here. Okay. And also looking for a ton of stops to be triggered and stops are climbing. Icebergs are also dropping, but um, uh, anyway, the, the buying continues here.
uh let's see spot when i look when we see a big wall of liquidity like that at 43.50 uh what do we look for um yeah support below um that that's kind of like uh you know the what is the re um this this is a kind of important uh <coughs> important thing to look for is <coughs> if there's support in the order book at a higher level and it repels you know, like let's say there was high liquidity. Let's just kind of draw it up. What if we see like really high liquidity underneath here? Okay, and it follows up. Uh, let, let, let's say they, they uh, uh, pull and add it higher, add it higher, add it higher, right? That's bullish if as long as we are getting the reaction to this is buyers. So this is a, a push. It's kind of like, you know, the wind, wind at your back, um, you know, pushing you along here, uh, going with the one momentum, uh, looking for the push into this 30, 30, uh, 4350 area here. All right. So that's what I would be looking for in the order book. A lot of times, though, what happens is, uh, and you'll have to kind of go back and, 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 and you know, verify this yourself. Um once you once the move starts typically you will see lots of liquidity a, a, typically a lot of liquidity kind of chasing up after it like underneath it you know supporting it um once the trend gets going though you usually don't see so much of that okay until the end of the trend once you start to get to the, at the end of the trend you'll start to see them underneath here right and you also see sellers take that liquidity on too Right, and that's where we start to see that cracks in in the in the foundation in the trend. Okay, so look for that scenario. It, what I'm the 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 um, many different scenarios to, to take a look at, but the bigger picture uh, is is it's really uh, overriding uh, uh, word here is context. So if they're going to show a lot of liquidity in the order book, what what happens to uh, what does the market think of it? Uh, more liquidity on the on the bid here. Does it go after it? Does it trade it? Is it repelled by it? Do we find buyers? And that that's where uh, you, you know you you can start to understand. Wow, there's a lot of buying pressure in here. Okay, or ooh, we're starting to find some sellers, and we can start to look for you know some different things to happen in here. Okay, it's all about context of these three elements on bookmap. Does that make make sense, Spot? Did I did I get to your question? Yeah, I, I mean, really, I think uh, understand where that liquidity. See, see the selling coming in here now. Okay, they're trading into these guys here, so we found some sellers. Now, there's our event. Now, what's the context around that event? Okay, I'm I'm actually looking to see if we can get buyers back up above it here, and then a move back to sixty. Okay, so this would be a false breakdown. And I, let's, we need to see, though, if we don't see it, we get sellers, and again, they're going to go for this 51 liquidity here. Okay, so it's, it's above this area here, around 54, 55, we're kind of looking for buyers. All right, so here's our event, and now what's the order flow around it? We're finding sellers, so we're looking for lower. Okay, even this is a, it's a low volume pullback still, and it didn't break the structure either. So we're still looking for lower. Okay, there's context for you there. Okay, even this buying in here that's showing up, it's still going lower. There it is. There, so we're just looking for that move to unfold. And now we're going to kind of reassess and zoom out. Okay, yeah, maybe we can go a little bit lower below the swing here at 50. Uh, I'd be looking for something to happen around 50. I just don't see much liquidity down here at 50, right? Okay, so now, now, now we're, we're actually getting both of our um, uh, 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 scenarios here. Now we're coming back up here. Now we still haven't broken the structure. Okay, but we're looking for buyers up here, right? Our, like we covered earlier, 
this is where the buyers or sellers came in the cluster of selling another cluster of selling here and we're already above these guys so looking for the push back to 55 here okay same same this concept here our, our understanding that they're already above this area here looking for the push to 55 this this here what we're just covering right now is no different than what we were covering earlier back down in this area here and this event we're looking at here okay does that make sense do you guys see that do you have questions on that okay so under if you understand this concept down here okay extrapolate that knowledge to same concept here the move to 55 Okay, because this is where that selling came in. So you're understanding, you know, the buyers and sellers within the structure here. Okay, and we, this was the event, though, that we were, and so we're looking for a pullback to that event, and the liquidity just happens to be here at 55. And there's our move. There's our move to 55. <laughs> the, the Richard Attenborough of order flow. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thank you. Um, the um, now 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 note that we're looking for the, this scenario here. Here's our event again. This is the battleground here at 55 and a half, 54 and a half. Okay, we if we if we get buyers back up above it, looking for maybe our 60 level finally. And we are we're starting to see them, but I, I don't trust it yet. It's not enough. If we can get back up here and we start to see big green dots, we're, we're going to likely go, you know, up to 60 here, look, looking for it, looking for that scenario to unfold. We have our context. Our context is this. Okay. And this down here, same idea, same idea here. Okay. Now looking for our 60, okay, at least back up to the swings here, but the liquidity is up here at 60. And there's our move. Boom. Okay. Now let's zoom out here. And it, it I gotta go. Um, I also want to give. I want Tom uh, to get in and uh, start uh, start streaming. I've been making these uh, videos kind of longer recently. There's just been such good stuff in here to cover with this volatility. And it's. I just think it's so much easier with this volatility uh, to read the order flow because the moves unfold. Whereas like, oh my God, we, that's why we went over to the NASDAQ for like years um, because we just didn't get much movement um, uh, and we the NASDAQ was so much nicer. Uh, but we're getting some nice movement in the S&P uh, these days. So we've been covering it for, for a while now. Uh, and our, our bigger level was 65, but the liquidity is up here, guys, at 70. So anyway... Um, starting to understand some of these areas in the order flow context within those areas uh, you, you can start to look for the moves to un the, go through the scenarios and the most likely scenarios and then start to look for those moves to unfold okay now it we can we'll go over it maybe a, another time not today uh, but um, uh, we you know we can start to wrap trading strategies around some of those scenarios if you see some of these things starting to unfold, how are you going to react with the trade? Okay, so lots of different things, lots of different ways, so many different ways to look at that. All right, so uh, anyway, some nice moves here, guys. Uh, and um, uh, let's, uh, we'll wrap it up. Uh, I'll put this up into the uh, streaming um, uh, recording room uh, so uh, you guys can uh, uh, review it if you like. All right. Hey, so any any questions on it before we go? I mean, did, did, was that um, uh, were you, were you guys able to? Do you want me to go over it again, or you know, does that make sense? Uh, you know what what you what you saw in there. Does is it is it maybe you know becoming a little bit clearer about what to look for in the order flow in some of these areas.
Okay. All right. Because we want to be clear. Uh, you know, it, it, you know, we're trying to trying to assist and, and, and provide as much value as we can in here. And we've got this amazing tool that shows us this transparency. Uh, so now we want to read it and put it to use. Okay. All right. Yeah, thanks, guys. Okay. All right. Hey, excellent, David. Uh, thanks for you guys' support. Uh, really. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, yeah, we're, uh, I, you know, I think we're, we're building a real, real nice community in here. Um, really, really like it. Uh, really happy about it. Um, okay. Well, uh, uh, yeah, I, we'll um, we'll wrap it up, um, and um, I'll have the recording up uh, in a few hours or so, uh, and uh, as the backbone of trading. That's the goal, uh, David. And then, boy, like once you get the backbone, it's like, you know, look at Scott Pulsini, look at look at Tom, look at J Trader. Uh, there'll be others uh, in here, and it's like, oh, okay. Well, I understand the backbone. I understand the foundation. Now I can extrapolate that to any sort of trading strategy. If you're looking at candlesticks, you're looking at fib levels, like look at the order flow around those levels. It's going to help you so much, right? It, you, you'll have much, much higher probability for your um, higher time frame analysis to pan out or not. Uh, and that's really, uh, really the key. All right. Uh, just we, we want to get more insight. Uh, to what's going on to uh, to help us make better trades. All right, guys. Yeah, take care, everybody. Have a great weekend, uh, and we will uh, we will see you next week on Monday. All right. Take care. Bye bye.